Hi everyone, my name is Lily and I'm the book blogger behind Utopia State of Mind and I am still getting over losing my voice so um, that's why I sound like this. I'm going to be filming my October wrap up for you uh, and it is a doozy so in October I'm going to just pull up the stats on my phone. In October I read 42 books. Uh, it's a lot. I know that um, last month in September I only read 20 or so books. Um, that was a better month. October was a lot but I was preparing for, um, I guess I can tell you now, I was preparing for a panel, um, I was preparing for a bunch of Asexual Awareness Week panels, then I was preparing for a panel in November which I'm moderating from Epic Reads. I think it's called I'm not actually, I will leave all the links below, but um, for that one I had to read like four or five, four out of five books because I read Jade Fire Gold already, and I'm still preparing for another panel in November, which it might be the last panel of the year, honestly, I might just take December off, um, and that one will be, it hasn't been announced yet, uh, but I'll give you a sneak peek, it will be um, 2022 sci-fi, adult, adult sci-fi debuts, so... Uh, but that means that, like, a lot. And also, I had another panel earlier in October, which were 2022 YA contemporary debuts. So, a lot of stuff going on. Um, but that's why it's 42 books. Um, of the 42 books, 43% of those featured main characters of color, and 48% of them featured queer main characters. So, normally, my, um, reading is that I normally read more characters of color than queer characters, but this month, totally, totally the opposite way around, and I'm actually so thrilled, honestly, about that. Uh, so, when I found those stats, I was just like, yes. Uh, I had a lot of favorites. Out of 42, like, uh, you're not, you're bound to find some that you loved. Um, I thought that they were going to be all romance reads, but they're not. Um, actually the majority of them are fantasy, so let, let me just go through them. The first is Strike the Zither. I keep, like, messing up Zither. It's very difficult. Uh, this month, um, of difficult titles that I had to say out loud, it was Strike the Zither and Into the Wind Racked Wilds. So, like, both of them honestly are very tongue twistery, but my number- I'm only gonna say one bullet point about why I loved all of the books. You can find reviews on my blog maybe not for all of them because I'm still writing them, but you can find reviews on social media or my blog, links below obviously. But the thing that I love the most about Strike the Zither is that the main character, Zephyr, is like so clever. I am just so shocked about how clever and resourceful and almost kind of like mercenary she is, but in the best way possible. I'm just so enamored with Joan's plot writing and it was just like so good. Um, the next one is Heart of the Sun Warrior. This is a sequel to Daughter of the Moon Goddess. This was a perfect duology ender. I'm pretty sure it's a duology. Anyway, it was the perfect sequel. It basically had the same things I loved about the first one, which is that I never knew where the plot was going. And I loved the... I loved the love triangle. It was so good. Like, I'm not a huge love triangle fan. I know that why they have their purpose. I appreciate them from like a kind of distant perspective, but this love triangle in Heart of the Sun Warrior was like chef's kiss. It just so perfectly illustrated the way that a love triangle is so much about the main character's journey and what these two love interests, or I guess more love interests, um, mean to a character and to their future. The next one that I loved was the Vermilion Emporium. I'm so, like, just so in awe of Jamie because these pa other two releases, or maybe two, the other releases from Jamie, um, Lucky Girl and The Life of Medieval Times of Kit Sweetly were contemporary, and the Vermilion Emporium is just, like, so far away from that. It's kind of like half Radium Girls, half magical oddities kind of thing read it, you'll find out. But the fantasy in it is so gorgeous and whimsical and touching and it's a story about grief and it's a story about love and it just like scooped out my heart in the best way. I loved it so much. Um, 
and I just, yeah, I, I'm so in awe of Jamie for switching genres and doing it so, so beautifully. The next one is A Restless Truth. We, I, oh, sorry. This is a pile of books I had. Only the physical ones that I have. I forgot to show that earlier. But it is A Restless Truth. This was so fun. So this is the companion sequel novel to A Marvelous Light. And this features Maud, who is the sister of Robin. I think this is her Robin from Marvelous Light. And it was so precious. It is sapphic. It also like, it takes place on a ship. So at first I was like, is this Titanic vibes? And okay, it's a ship, but it's not Titanic vibes. But I loved how it was almost like a locked room mystery because you know, the, the, it's, a, it's a ship. Um, and it's very much on the mystery, but it's also very much about kind of these ramifications. And Maud is like a precious sweet cinnamon roll. It's funny because you know that, that TikTok where it's like, looks like a cinnamon roll could kill you. Looks like you could kill you is a cinnamon roll. Looks like a cinnamon roll is a cinnamon roll. Like, you know, that one. Um, Maud looks like a cinnamon roll and is a cinnamon roll. And um, Violet kind of like, looks like she could kill you but probably inside is kind of cinnamon roll-esque um so this was just so beautiful i love the interaction between maude and violet they were just such gorgeous characters and really really love this one and going to the next category frizzy i loved this graphic novel so much i've been so in awe of all of clarabelle's talents and frizzy is just a gorgeous stunning middle grade book about hair but it's also about self-confidence about the racism attached with hair and beauty standards like it is just so gorgeous it's like a middle grade version I feel like of wash day diaries which is another graphic novel um about hair as well and I loved this one so much for the interactions between the main character Frizzy and her mom specifically the kind of unpacking kind of the racism and microaggressions that we've learned or that maybe are like bringing forward but don't want to be but unpacking it for ourselves um i love that aspect in this so much the next one is as long as the lemon trees grow which made me cry multiple times um please read it it made me cry i'm not a huge crier when i read but this one like made me cry it was so good it is just so raw about grief and about love and hope. I love how these books, like specifically as long as the lemon trees grow, has this darkness in, in their grief, in the sadness, in how like torn up we are, but also this kernel as well of hope and of perseverance and resilience. Um, just loved it. The next one that I really loved was Drizzle Dreams and Love Struck Things. This one was like it gave me little vibes, little women vibes, but not really because I haven't read Little Women, but it gave me like vibes, mostly because they're sisters. But I loved how in Drizzle Dreams and Love Strokes Things, each one of the main character sisters is like a different season and we are always seeing each of the sisters through other sisters' perspectives and it's just so beautiful. I kept being like, oh, this is a sister that I resonate the most with. And then it's like, oh no is a sister it was just so good and it was a contemporary that ev every time I was always looking forward to reading it and always super happy um the next one is everyone hates Kelsey Miller which okay I really really loved the Jasmine project but everyone hates Kelsey Miller just like looked me straight in the soul okay Kelsey has some very similar um insecurities Kelsey also um, has like a questioning sexuality in this, which is kind of a subplot. Um, but um, there's also adoption rep, transracial adoption rep as well. And Kelsey's insecurities are so <laughs> relatable. And I also, and everyone hates Kelsey Miller. I love how Meredith looks at the ways we can inadvertently hurt people, but like not mean to, but end up hurting people and that line between protection and support. Um, gorgeous. Love this contemporary so much. It made me feel majorly added, like, a lot. 
And moving on to romance books. The first one is Season of Love, which was just like so precious. It happens on a Christmas tree farm. Cue like the Taylor Swift song. Um, it was just so beautiful. I loved the themes of found family and the themes of love and how love can be very terrifying. Loved it all. Um, the main characters are just so good. It was dual POV, I'm pretty sure. And so you were able really to see the things that we hold close to our chest but don't tell people, like, so good. Um, I think I devoured this in a couple days. The next one is The Stand Up Groomsman. I am a sucker for like enemies slash people you didn't really like but end up liking in the end. And Stand Up Groomsman has it. I loved the stand up comedy. I loved the queer bisexual rap. I loved um, seeing these two main characters interact and like the lenses that we see each other in. It was just also hilarious and um, heartwarming. I loved it so much. And the final one is Partners in Crime, which has to be my favorite Alicia Rye book ever now. Um, what don't I love? It was like second chance romance. It was that. And then it's like, but they're kidnapped together. And then they have to like go on a mystery scavenger hunt to save their lives and their families' lives. And like, it was so fantastic. If you like heisty novels and if you like romance it was so good like I was continuously needing to read it and read it and read it to kind of figure out what happened I loved their chemistry and their chemistry only got more spicy and electric in these like life or death scenarios so like double thumbs up um so that was my October wrap up a lot of stuff honestly um I hope you had a fun time watching October was really bad <laughs> was really bad. It was intense. I lost my voice for half of October. I'm filming this on the last day of October. I lost my voice for half of October. I am still not doing well voice-wise. Yeah, you can tell like throughout the video just um and that I feel like is a metaphor for how I felt like in October. Like I just 42 books. Like I just have run down all the panel prep, I've loved the panels, they were fantastic, I would not have not done them, like, they were amazing, but, like, I am run down a lot. So, yeah, I'm hoping to finish the year off a little bit better and less stressed, but don't know if it will happen. Anyway, um, thank you for watching. Let me know what your favorite or one of your favorite books from October were. Also, if you've read any of the books that I've mentioned, please let me know. And I will see you in the next video, which hopefully won't be as long. But honestly, I'm just trying to, like, get by at this point. So, sorry in advance. Have a great, uh, reading day, week, month, or year. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.